Hey guys, and welcome to this last part in how to paint a Black King. So today we're going to finalize this little guy and get him all done. Um, yeah, it's been a fun little ride and I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, but today we're going to be finishing it off. So um, there's a few steps to, to do that. <clears throat> We've left the skin really to the last, the last piece of the puzzle, which we're going to be working on today. Um, so there is a little bit to go through. Um, we're going to be using a technique that um, I've shown before on how to paint monster flesh, which is um, basically once you've done all these kind of um, colorations in the skin, we're going to build up by um, tinting the lighter tones with um, our main uh, skin tone um, to get sort of slightly colored uh, variations and, and, and help blend and, and highlight up uh, the skin so that we maintain a lot of that color. We're not going to do like a ton of overpainting um, because a lot of what's happening here is pretty pretty cool and um, yeah you don't want to lose it but we want to just blend in some of the areas where the um, the washes have kind of left either staining marks or just a bit undefined or not as clear um, and can use some highlights on edges and stuff like that um, so it's not as a full uh, working as with um, the monster flesh but we're certainly going to just add some um, more tonal range. So that'll be what we're working on today. Um, and in addition, we're going to then do our final, you know, the thing I've been talking about pretty much every single time. We need to get Nurgle's dribbly bits on and uh, make him happy. So we have um, all these little pockmark holes and different different bits on the body. Um, we're going to use a range of different things. So originally I was going to add some um, I guess some rust staining and so on to the to the weapon, but I really like the way it's come up, so I don't really want to wreck it with a bunch of you know uh, rust and everything. So instead of doing that, um, we'll we'll do a different technique for that one. But to start with, um, the dribbles on all of the armor, we're going to use um, this Kraken skin here, um, and then on the skin we're going to use the purple, um, and. Yeah, on, on the blade, I think we'll be using like a little bit of uh, probably, uh, not the black there, this one here, the um, the blue that we've been using. And we'll do some some little uh, staining and dribbles coming out of the those little areas and darken them. Um, just to give a, the sense of a little bit of that, but um, rather than making this a rusted blade, having this more as a... Um, well, it's still rusted, but it, it's giving off like a really interesting look and I, I just don't want to ruin it. So um, that's the decision we'll be going for. Um, and then probably, yeah, we'll do some sort of dribbly thing or something going on in those eyes maybe. Um, and then, yeah, uh, black rim the base and we'll be good to go. So uh, let's get started. We're going to begin with the flesh. So we've got our um, corpse pale, a little bit of that grimoire purple that we were using before. We've got our grey to um, uh, basically control saturation once again, and a bit of white there, and and our and our various um, washes, so the yellow, purple, magenta, and the blue. So I'm going to set the palette up, and um, then we'll get on to uh, doing some painting. All right. So to begin with, what we want is a medium-sized brush, maybe a one or a zero or something like that, <clears throat> depending on the brand. And we're going to bring across some of this um, flesh tone that we have, and we're going to make our gradient. Um, so we have a range of color to use, and it's going to be a, a little process of jumping back and forth to find the right color for the right area. It's a bit like painting with numbers. Um, we've got this sort of patchwork of color and, and, and tonal ranges on here, and we're going to change and adapt depending on the area. So some bits will be darker, some will be lighter. So this isn't a straightforward, you know, dark to light kind of layering. We're going to be moving back and forward and, and just responding to whatever's going on on the surface. Um, so we've also got our ink washes out. We're going to be tinting and we're going to be moving back and back and forward between these colors just to just to resolve and finalize this this area on the skin and just make it a little a little bit cooler and a little bit a little bit brighter. So we move this across a little tiny bit of our um, Grimoire purple there, just to create a dark tone behind. Um, a little tiny bit of the grey. So we'll begin by just putting a dark shade in, <clears throat> sort of a bruisey purple colour, um, just to give us something to work with there if we need it. It might not be necessary, but it's good to have it there. And then bring this down. We'll just build up a few darker tones there, building into a lighter tone here. And then mostly just the... Um, the corpse pale and then we've got like your bright there 
and then a little bit of white in. So we've got a few colors there to choose from. All right, and now we're going to be deciding on how we're going to attack this. So first of all, you want to pick your model up and take a look. And, you know, instantly you're seeing areas of, of, of brightness and, and, and dark. So we'll start on this focal point area. This is the most important. And we've got a few areas where the, the staining has kind of just, um, I guess, done some areas that, that aren't quite clear. So I'd probably start with somewhere in the mid here. Grab a little bit of the yellow, bring it off to the side, drag that out, and we just start creating a sort of yellow tone. A little bit of the white maybe as well. Bring that in. We'll just keep finding this color. So it's just a little bit more yellowy because there's a lot of yellow there in that area. Twirl your brush off so it's not got a nice point, not too much on. And we're just going to test it here on this on this area and just see how we go just around those areas where it's um, the very raised areas, just to see how light that's going. So it's still probably a little bright, so maybe bring a little bit of this darkness in. Just to tone that back a bit. There we go. So this is gonna be, um, I guess, a harder thing to write a recipe for. This is really a feel thing, and you're just working very carefully picking off all the raised areas, blending in areas that feel a little bit out of place. Okay, going on the edges of some of these things to, to lighten them up. And we might even come back with a bit of washing later if we feel like it's um, not quite where it needs to be. But it's just a, a case of just slowly going through and methodically cleaning up. And as we blend into, into new colors, we'll change it up. So this is just picking off some of these areas where the yellow is, where it's a little brighter and um, just cleaning that up. So I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up very well, but you can see we're just trying to establish it in a more even way so that the, the color changes are, are more smooth and less uh, abrupt, I guess, is what we're trying to do. Little dotting motions, little tiny streaking motions, just giving a little bit of brightness to that area. And, um, and then moving on with a different color. So then we might change up into the magentas and bring a bit more red in there. And we just slowly work our way around. So that's pretty much how it goes. So I'm gonna do some of these yellow areas and we'll come back and then I'll, um, we'll move on to some of the other colors. Okay, so I thought I'd bring you back in. So I've started to work on some of these yellow areas. Um, unfortunately, it's gonna be very difficult to <clears throat> really see this. It's very subtle work, but basically I've started bringing in some of the blue. So we've got this sort of um, yellowish tone here, and then I'm just adding a little bit of this blue in to tint it. And you're gonna work around and do this type of work. So in areas that are darker, you're gonna pull in dark, darker tones and so on. So that's what I've been doing here to sort of blend this up. And it's very thin, uh, color so it's almost like glaze washing and you're just trying to um, slowly work that in so that it blends a bit more naturally um, and, and give yourself a few little highlights and so on along the way so I just thought I'd bring you in here just to show how this works and so you're adding even more little varieties of, of color in a more micro way um, across the surface yeah, unfortunately this doesn't really lend itself well to a tutorial because it's a uh, very involved little little movements and so on. But um, you'll get the idea once you start. Um, I guess my Monster Flesh one is a lot more straightforward because the color is more consistent across the surface. It's less varied than this. There's like a lot of colors going on here in a small area. Whereas that bust um, that I did uh, for my Blood of Gods thing, um, it's a little bit, um, yeah, just it's a it's an overall pale area and it's a bit larger. Obviously the bust is larger, so the, the surface area is, is broader and you, you get a, an easier way of transitioning those colors. So if you're really interested in sort of doing this type of tinting and, and so on to, to blend out and glaze um, your undertones together, uh, definitely check that out on, on my channel and, and then that'll give you a, a better idea of how to do this. But um, I'm just gonna work on this area here with you so that you can actually get a, a sense of how to do it. So we're moving from the yellow to the blue and then for magentas. So this kind of mid area is, is where it's working best. So we'll bring some over here and um, start pulling in a little bit of that. Um, and as you can see, that's actually going close to that original color that we made at the top, but it's still got a bit more red in it, so it's probably gonna work better. So we'll come in here into this central area where we've got a lot of red and purple, 
and we'll just very carefully start glazing that in and blending that together making sure we have very little paint on we're just gently feathering those colors together and giving a little bit more natural transition Is that showing up yep and just really working it in until you're happy and so then um, so it's hard to see there but you can see that now we've got this little bit of a gradient here between uh, the yellows up the top moving into purples coming into this green and then into this blue and so you, you're just trying to really establish all of that and keep mucking around with it and keep moving uh, through all these different colors until you're happy and adding little spots of brightness on the edges okay on those those lips of the flesh where it's breaking apart little tiny feathers and flicks to give those brights and just give it a more and more even transition um, from that dark to light so it doesn't look like you've just um, ink washed it basically you want it to feel like it's been painted like all of these different colors have been painted on and that will give you a, a more satisfying finish in the end um, so we'll grab a little bit of this purple here maybe bring it across this way uh, grab a little bit of this color mix it in so we get a little bit of more of that purple in there and so on this side we've got some a um, little bit of this purple in here so we'll just bring that in so we see more of that almost like a lavender color you know Nurgle likes to be pretty just like Slanesh so we're going to bring some of this in and pretty him up a little bit and there we go and just keep adding that in so we're just working through this surface finding out the colors picking it out going very slowly and methodically through it um, just to clean it up it's mostly already there but we just want to see some lights and then once that's sort of blended in what you'll come back in with is more of the straight color let's say um, this this sort of part here I'll show you how to highlight this up and so we just come in and very carefully then pick out um, some of these very raised areas so you're not going to um, do this across every single area but where it's really bright and light we're just going to pick out some spots here across some of these lines on, on the and just create that little bit of light Because what you don't want to do is um, end up covering all that with uh, with straight color, and then you'll end up with something that doesn't have um, as much variety in it. So it's very careful work. We're just picking out all this and just building it up and giving it a bit more a bit more definition. And so I'm going to work through and do that now uh, on the front, and we'll take a look at it when I come back. All right, I thought I'd bring you back again so we can take a look. So as you can see, just on that shoulder to the belly. Um, it's just starting to smooth out a little. You can see here the transition is starting to blend a little more there. We've got a bit more blending happening in around here um, and, and around the edges of that where the, um, where the opening wound is. We're just starting to see highlights that are a bit, bit clearer and you can start to read that, that edge. And that's just been using these, these sort of um, bluish tones and so on and just picking them out and just going back and forth with different colors until we get a, a better transition you can see here on on here I've started to add in just these little glazes and these little little areas to um, bring the two colors together so that we get a little bit softer transition there it was just looking a little bit too stark so I don't mind it here where it's happening this streaking that's kind of nice but it was just looking a little bit too watermarked on this side so like if we look at something like um, we'll come into this like top area here. We've got some like heavy um, wash staining there. So we'll come back in with some of the yellow and um, and fix that up. So if we use some of this kind of brighter tone here, it's all very, very, very soft and, and subtle work. We're just coming in and is that in focus? Yep. And just very carefully just running that across 
and allowing those colors to come together while still maintaining a lot of the undertones because we're not trying to eliminate it we're just trying to get a slightly slightly cleaner result and just bring that down you know and take a look so now it's starting to soften a bit we might bring some of that blue back in just on the base here where we've got underneath there's a bit of blue there so we'll just bring a little bit of that together okay and you're just following the edges of the um, the contours of, of the muscle and picking out where things are on the edges they're going to be slightly lighter things are in depressions are going to be a little bit darker and we're just sort of slowly blending that together so you can see now that's a little softer a little nicer there's less of that staining going on and so I'll come across here and might use some purples in there and just gently caress that together and just build those colors so they're not quite as stark a difference across the surface and just clean it all up and add a little bit of this, this bright down here this sort of um, corpse power with the white and so on on just some of the edges at the top here and, and, and maybe some little line highlights on some of these um, bigger folds and that will give you um, a, a nice finish and even and the same thing again We'll come across the, the tops of the hand here and pick out the, the knuckles and the top um, to give a bit of brightness. Um, and then and then just work your way around. Less important on the on the lower half, we can keep this a little bit a little bit darker and, and, and messy and just maybe pick out some of the areas where the detail is in this sort of section and we can leave that blending off we might just use some of the dark just to um, clean up some areas where the the wash is allowing some of the lighter color to show through and it's not quite uh, clean we can just clean that a little a little but overall that'll just give you a final worked layer that will just give this guy that little bit of pop that he needs just to finish him so I'll go back and, and continue work and I'll bring you back in once I've done a bit more okay so I thought I'd bring you back in so we can see as I've been going around, I've been just picking out raised areas with these different colors. So we've got, I'll try to get that in focus, there we go. So we've got these different ones here from these sort of tinted blue tones to bruised tones to yellows. And we're just moving through those and, and just picking out where we need. It's all in that sort of mid to light range color. And you're just trying to, as you can see here, just slowly soften some of those transitions and adding little line edge highlights on, on raised lips and, and folds of skin just to brighten it up. We can see at the top here now it's much more smoothed in and we're seeing a, a softer transition. Just blending that in, making it feel a bit more like real skin. Just so he stands out a bit nicer and so now we're just working on this low area here. So I've been just adding in a little bit of the blue um, into some of these shadows just to just to soften it a bit so that we get we get a nicer a nicer thing and then you got a bit of this yellow here so we're just bringing a little bit more of um, that yellow in so just grabbing a little bit of this a bit of the yellow in there and this I guess is a bit lighter than a than a mid tone but with a little bit of yellow in it okay very very lightly and just coming in here and just dotting it around and getting a little bit of bright around those edges that has a little bit of yellow and softening it in following that that crease up in and around to give a little bit more brightness to where we need it um, and then when we come into here obviously this area here is a little darker so we're going to use a little bit of this deeper color here throw in a bit more of the blue a bit more of the lighter tone maybe and then make sure it's always very thin we're just doing very subtle touches just to just to bring those lights across and there we go so you're just seeing that um, I guess softening it's essentially a glaze over the areas but you're also highlighting at the same time so you're just trying to bring that in very soft subtle touches of the brush yeah, unfortunately this is like one of those techniques that there is no magic bullet for it's just about very soft and subtle gradients 
and then in under here it's getting a bit dark so we don't want to utilize too much of that it might bring some of the red in now so you're you're building up your knowledge here as well so getting into this kind of a more painterly approach to to applying color and that really helps to understand how how, how colors work together and, and how they blend and how you can be quite I guess adventurous with your with your blending and your colors um, it doesn't have to be so um, formulaic in, in terms of approach you can you can um, play around and find interesting ways to um, to blend out color and that and that's one of the, the fun things about this technique is just um, playing with all of those little nice interesting moments you know the happy accidents as a certain famous uh, artist has said and um, you know just finding the moments that really I guess speak to you with the paint you know this is a very meditative exercise you're, you're just uh, going with the flow and, and, and you know just seeing what you can come up with you know without too much pressure on yourself so we can see now that that started to blend a little nicer with some little edge highlights there not too much we don't want to brighten that that base up too far but it's it's looking much nicer and so I'm just going to go through now and uh, do the other side and just pick out any more little spots I haven't paid very much attention to the other side I've kept that pretty bland and that's that's intentional to make it really feel shadowed compared to the top we want that top to really be quite bright and, and the undersides to be quite dull and that helps to just make him stand out and, and give some nice, you know, we're seeing now that's like a totally different color now sort of blending in. So we're getting some differences across the surface, which is really cool because that's what happens with, you know, rotted skin. It gets very weird and wonderful in different areas. So, um, yeah, I'll keep going on with that and I'll come back in a second. All right. And there we have it. So that's the finished flesh. So, yeah, this camera doesn't shut up too well, but there is just a much softer subtler transition with a lot of these colors you still got some of that streakiness some of the drips and that's really nice we just don't want it to dominate everywhere we want to we want to see some some smoother areas some rougher areas you know just varying it up and now the color transitions are a little different on each area you know down here it's more sort of purple to greenish sort of pale tone we've got some similar thing happening under here as it moves up it moves into more blues and purples we've got blue in the center there more yellows at the top here um, you know and a paler softer transition there so we're just seeing something a bit more interesting which is really really nice and that's really um, all you're trying to do with the with the skin is just give it some variation a few little line highlights here and there in, in the focal point um, and on some key edges just to just to uh, pick it off and make it make it a bit more interesting but overall it's really cool and that's um, that's all you need to do as I said before in the previous ones you could have stopped in the previous step but I feel like this little uh, step is a great way just to just to finish it soft little glazes and highlights just to just to blend it all together and give you something really lovely at the end um, and it also helps you to understand color you can see that the variety of colors here we've gone through you know all these little blended areas here just picking out little little uh, pieces of that color and just adding it in it's very very painterly approach very similar to the way uh, painters uh, paint flesh when they're doing um, you know um, a painting um, you know with with a portrait or something like that you'll see these little flicks of color and all that kind of thing and, and that's sort of what you're um, emulating here in, in this is to um, get some of that really lovely little, little spots of different colors um, so it's really interesting for your eye to look at and because we've established initially that um, you know those contrasting colors you know yellow oranges to purple blues uh, greens to um, to reds and so on um, across the model um, you're getting that that vibrancy and that 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 difference in color uh, and, and, and interest and so it over overall it works um, and and that's that's really all you want in a model so uh, from here what we're going to do is um, do all the all the Nurgle's uh, fun bits and uh, get that that finalized and then we'll then we'll ruin the base so um, I'll come back with a clean palette and we'll get ready and then um, we'll be done and hopefully it'll uh, come up really good all right I'll see you soon Alright, the final fun bit. Here we go. 
So uh, to start with, let's begin on the axe. So I'll get some of this blue here and we'll just mix a bit of water with that. But it can be a little bit stronger this time. And we're going to add um, a few little drops and drips um, through these uh, little pockmark holes here. So we'll start by just filling some of them up. Make sure you don't have too much on your brush and we'll just draw that down. Just add a few little drips here and there. A few darker spots. Here we go. We don't want to do too much of this because we've already done a lot of work on, on this on this axe. And as I said, it's kind of cool as it is, so I don't really want to change too much or lessen some of the highlights and some of the little bright areas that are going on. But just adding a few little streaks coming down is a nice idea without changing it too much. starting to see some of that blue coming through and it's going to go a little purple in places because of the colors underneath which is nice so you get a little bit of variation just a few little uh, streaky motions like that and we start to see some drips pull it up a little bit more around here where it's uh, settling a little bit in there a little bit in there, maybe a little bit more in there. There we go. That'll just help uh, set it off a little bit. So now we'll move on to um, our, our skin. And so we've got this purple here. Really, really simple. Keeping it thin, not too much, um, not too much water, but just enough just to, to make it run. And we'll go down to a finer brush now, because we're going to be doing some um, finer dribbles. So we just get that in like this. Twirl your brush so you get a nice point on the end, and it's quite watery. And now we're just going to pick out areas where we want some of these little drips to go. So let's start out maybe um, on this area here. We've got a nice, a nice flat, and we'll just place it in the bottom of the of that, and just draw it down. we get a nice little, um, you know, blood mark or I don't know what sort of blood he's got that's that's purple, but you know, it's Nurgle, they can have whatever they like. And so you're just running it down the edge and just placing your little drips wherever you think they'll be fun. Little tiny ones, even a few little dots if you want to, but just basically working your way around picking out everywhere where you'd like them to be. Uh, they could even be coming out of the boils. You do anywhere that you like. So I'm gonna go through and do all that now and I'll come back when it's done. All right, let's have a look. So there we go, just a few little drips and draps going around. Just to help, you know, add a bit more interest. And now that final little drip that we've got in there, um, I was umming and ahhing over it. I don't know whether I want to do it green. Most people do it green, but it feels a bit weird and out of place. I think it should be a purple. So we're going to keep that color, but maybe just lighten up some of the edges. So um, we'll get our fine brush again. Just add a little bit of white to the purple. And we'll bring in just a few areas of light on this uh, larger drip, I guess. Just to build it up, we've already added a little bit of lights there, but we'll just um, we'll just help brighten it up a little bit. Just add these little highlights. Um, and in the center there, and just keep adding. And doing these little dotted motions, just to where the light would hit it. Here we 
go. And probably a little dot in here somewhere. We don't need to um, highlight the whole thing because this is liquid, so it's not going to have the same highlight across the surface. It's actually going to have um, areas of darkness and so on across it. So we don't need to be like super accurate with all the way around just on this like so this area here where it's hitting there will probably have you know a little dot of light hitting it and then maybe just a little dot in under there and yeah that's looking good so yeah that'll be pretty cool and then finally we want to do the um, the green bits so now we have our really bright green here thin down there we go twirl the brush we've got our very thin color here and now we're doing on the armor so <clears throat> for the armor very much the same method we're just going to pick out like an area like this, maybe fill it up and just have it very carefully dribble down. Like the armor itself might be alive, you know, you might have a demon uh, inside the armor, as a lot of these Chaos Warriors do. And so we don't necessarily want to do every pockmark, but the ones that make sense where you can see the dribble, you know, you, you want to have enough space to actually um, add these kinds of details. But just some of the areas where it seems appropriate and on the back. So I'll go through and do all that. In terms of the face, I actually do like it to be quite dark. So we may not um, do all of that, but maybe we'll just do one. We'll do this lower one here. So that's in focus there. So we'll just whack a little bit of this green in here. Just do a little, a little drip just coming out. So we've got like, you know, just, something happening on this side of the the uh, the mask it's very subtly and that's just going to add a little bit of variation because so I think if we do it across all of them it's going to look a bit weird so you don't want to do that so I'll go through and do all that now and then when we come back um, we should be pretty much done except for black rimming the base. So I might do that off camera as well. So once you've done all these drips, black rim your base and then we'll take one final look at this. And I think we're pretty much done. I can't think of anything else to add to this. So yeah, all right, I'll be back soon. All right, and we're all done. Let's take a look. So there he is, the finished Black King. With all these drips, the favorite of Nurgle. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been a fun little journey going through this and um, making this for all you guys. I hope you uh, get something out of it. I hope it's uh, going to help you improve your painting. Uh, I certainly enjoyed doing it. I like these type of techniques. They're good fun and you end up with a really nice result. So at the end, I'll give you an overview with um, the colors that we used and you know a final picture of this guy with the black rim bat base um, i also incidentally just uh, picked out those little uh, bolts that i hadn't done with just a little bit of the metal and, and some of the ink wash that we've done before um, so yeah but otherwise yeah he's done all good so um, yeah if you've liked this please subscribe notify hit the notify button and all that kind of stuff it really helps me out but otherwise um yeah i guess i'll catch you on the next one guys